Hi, how are you doing? And welcome to another video in the Linux Basics series. Uh, in the last videos, we've looked at some basic navigation around uh, the Linux CLI, uh, moving in and out of directories and listing the contents and things like that. In today's um, video, we're going to have a look at files and folders now um, not just moving in and out of them but interacting with files and folders and things like creating copying moving files making and removing directories we're going to touch on the space within file and directory names yeah and best practices around that and also finding files yeah now why are we looking at this well a lot of contents in Linux is just text files or more specifically more accurately files that contain text i want to say that um when you think about a text file you think of file.txt well texts uh, files that contain text could be something like uh, config files or you know uh, any file really it doesn't even have to have a file extension i'm gonna have a look at how we can see what a file is um, a little bit later in the video. But as users of Linux, um, we need to be able to create, read and modify these types of files. Um, and that's exactly why we're going to be looking at this today. So strap in, let's go take a look. Um, here I am back in my trusty jammy fish virtual machine and we're going to go and open up our terminal because that's where we're working in the command line I'll just make it a little bit bigger so that you guys can see this pretty well um, I'm also going to open up our file explorer simply because when we're kind of mooching around at this stuff when we're playing interacting with these things for the first time or getting to grips with it it's handy to be able to have this around because you can see things happening um, if something's not quite going right in the command line you can have a look in the uh, in the GUI folders just to see what's going on but do bear in mind um, if you log into a server version of um, uh, uh, Linux, if you SSH into, into a machine, if you get a reverse shell on a machine, something like that, you're not going to have this GUI luxury available to you. But it's, and you'll see, it's very useful to have it here. So, what are we going to look at today? Now, we've got our documents folder here. Let's go into it, and it's got a whole bunch of files. And from the previous video, we can also have a look at this in the command line. CD documents, and then we can list the contents. And it's got all these in. We can see there's a directory called directory3, and there's a bunch of files. Some have got file name, uh, file extensions, some haven't. Some have got spaces, some haven't. And some are capitalised, some are not. I'm not going to have a look at all of these things. So, first on the list was creating a file. How do I go about creating a file? Now, you could use a, um, um, a GUI editor or a text editor and create the file that way. But there's ways and means of creating a file um, that... Um, and what we're going to do is just get rid of these. So we're going to create a brand new file. Yeah. And the one that we create, because there's nothing in this directory. And just to prove a point. Yeah, completely empty. GUI's telling us and the command line's telling us nothing in it. So we're going to create. We're going to put something in here, yeah? Because there's nothing there. We're going to put something in there. Just something. Um, and we're going to create an empty file to start off with. 
and the command that we're going to use is called touch and we're going to touch something when you've stopped giggling there we go I've touched something and it was all fine but this is what I mean about the GUI you just saw that pop up yeah so we know judging by the CLI absolutely nothing's happened but we know something's happened because we can see it in the GUI yeah and that's created a file there's nothing in it there's no file extension I can create the file with a file extension I just give it a file extension and there we go it's created it yeah so we can create a file with or without an extension and Linux just does not care um, yeah it just doesn't care even if we try and open it it'll know that it's a doc uh, it's a file it'll if it's got nothing in it it'll presume that it's a, a text file with nothing in it I'm a look at having a look at what the file is a little bit later on but there's another way I can create this file and this time with something in it and we use the echo command now on its own I can't type on its own echo seems a little bit benign and useless what's the point of echo because if I just use it with nothing else on it apart from echo hello world it's literally going to do what it says on the tin it's going to echo it to me in the command line but I'm talking about creating a file well what we can do is tell the echo command to instead of outputting it to the screen output it to a file great that's exactly what we want so we've got echo hello world and the way we tell it to output is with a greater than symbol little space and we will create a file yeah let's create a file file again on the CLI nothing's happened because we're not telling it to echo to the screen now we're telling it to echo and output that echo to a file and it's created file and just to prove the point I'm going to use a command that we'll look at in later videos but just as a rough guide the cat command can read the contents of a file and then output that to the CLI so that file does say hello world yeah that's what's in that file and again from the GUI perspective we can double click on the file it knows even though it's got no extension on it it knows it's a text file and it'll open up uh, a basic text editor with hello world in it so we do know that that is the contents of the file um, but let's just say I did hello everyone file with a space after the little greater than symbol um, what do you think is going to happen now yeah, I've just pressed enter and nothing's happened nothing happened here nothing happened here however something did happen now let's go and have a look use the history rather than me typing it all out again oh now it says hello everyone yeah because I've said echo hello everyone to that file and just to make sure let's open it in a text editor and it just says hello everyone so what's happened there well echo um, it's not created the file because the files are already exist uh, or it already exists so all it's doing is saying overwrite that file if it already exists overwrite it if it doesn't exist create it and write it but that's not very useful because if you've got a novel in a file and you just want to put a bit more text in it uh, it's gonna you know delete that whole novel and replace it with whatever you've just typed and that means it's gone irreversibly gone forever uh, unless you had a backup um, or a snapshot if it's on a VM, something like that, snapshots are very useful. So, 
instead of having a greater than symbol, what we can do is use two of them. Let's be greedy. Let's use two of them. And what we'll do is just go world. Again, nothing's happened in the GUI. We've just gone straight back to our command prompt. Nothing's happened in here. But now, if I open the file, pop, it's now appended hello world to our existing file, which just had hello everyone. So with the echo command, you can create a file with text in it. You can overwrite a file if that file already exists. Be very careful with that. Um, but if you want to append to a file that already exists, we can use the two greater than arrows together. Yeah. Um, and we'll just double check. Yeah. It's appended it to it. So now it's got the two lines rather than just the one line. Yeah. So that is creating a file. Now you can create files in other ways. You can create them with text editors and other programs and we'll go up into that in a few videos time. But now we've got some files. We've got something in our directories. What can we do with them now? Well, let's go back a directory into our documents folder. And we've got some other files. So what I can do is I can copy files. Yeah, I can copy them from one place to another, but I can also copy them from one name to another. So let me demonstrate. I've got a file, yeah, and it's got no extension, it's got nothing. So I can use the copy command. Again, I can do it all in the GUI, right click and copy and all that, but um, what I can do is use the copy command, which is just CP. And I can go copy file. Now we don't need any greater than symbols or anything else. We just, because the copy command is pretty simple. It knows what we want to do. Yeah, it's, it's clever. And I can tell it to copy it to uh, a file called file.txt. And then it does it. Yeah. You can see here we've now got the file and we've got file.txt and that's an exact copy of that file. I've just changed the name of it. Um, I can copy um, a file. Uh, let's copy file2.txt to directory3. And when we're copying it, we do have to give it a file name. It's not that clever. We do have to give it a file name. But we can give it whatever we want, or we can keep with the existing. Yeah, again, nothing's happened on the, uh, on the terminal screen here. But if we now go, we've got file 2. It's not gone anywhere. Uh, if we go into directory 3... There it is. I've now copied it into directory three. Um, now we've used the ls command before, but what I'm going to do now oops, three, is use it to have a look in a different directory. So ls on its own will look in the directory it's in, but if I give it a file path as well as an argument, it'll look in the directory path that I've given it. Yeah, so I'm just telling it to now look in directory three. Uh, and it's gone. Again, it's got the file, file two, something and something.txt. So that's copying. So I can copy a file from here to there. I can create an, um, and that's create an exact copy of it. I can create an exact copy of, copy of it with a different file name as well. I can change the file name. But it is creating a copy of it. Why would I want to do that? Well, I might want to change it but keep the original as a backup, something like that. So that's copying a file. And that creates, that, that, that means I've got two files now. I can just purely 
move a file. So in here, I'm going to get rid of this file. I'm just going to hit delete on the keyboard in the GUI. We'll come to removing files in a second, but just to make it easy, I've got rid of that. So I'm still in my documents folder. So let's now move a file. Yeah, we're not going to create a copy of it. We're simply going to move it. So we'll uh, move again. We shorten every command as much as we can. Move. And so instead of copying it, I'm going to move it. And this could be exactly the same as the copy command. Yeah, I have to give it a file name that I'm moving it to. So I could change the name of the file here. But instead of copying it, it's going to move it. File 2's popped back up here. Yeah? But if we now go into the documents folder, file 2's gone. Yeah. What else can we do with a move? Well, let's go back in here so we can see things happening. I can, let's pop in just to make things a little bit shorter to type, because you know what my typing is like. Um, uh, I've, I've got I've got file 2 but I haven't got file 1 and I want to start at file 1 so what I can do is go file 2.txt file 1 um, can I do 2 again here yeah, 1.txt um, so I'm now going to change the name of this file it hasn't changed the file just the file name and I've just changed it to file1.txt. Yeah, so the move command can not only be used to move a file, it can be used to move uh, to, to rename a file. Um, and we're going to skip a little bit ahead because um, I don't know whether this is going to work. with stuff in it. Okay. Don't put the slashes on. No, okay. Oh, it's because I'm already in it. Idiot. Right, it does do it. We, even with something in it. Um, so not only can we change the name of a file we can actually use the move command to change the name of a directory as well yeah so I'm skipping ahead a little bit because I'm talking about directories now instead of files but because I was on the move I thought well I'll just mix it up a bit so we've now created a file two different ways. We've copied a file from one directory to another. We've copied it and changed the, the file name. We've moved a file from one directory to another, not just copied it. And we've changed the name of a file and a directory with the move command. So let's go get rid of something. Yeah, the next up on the list is the delete. We want to remove a file. So let's go into the directory. Let's go into directory two. <laughs> I was just looking to see why that didn't work. I haven't even given it the command. If you give it an argument on its own, you just have an argument in, on your own in a room. It's not going to do anything. Right. There's me being silly again. So we're in... Feels like a Sunday, you know. Um, so we're now, we're now in... Um, moving on. We're in directory 2. 
we've got a bunch of files um, and I want to I want to delete something so let's delete something let's be crazy and to delete something we need to remove it we're going to remove it from the file system so what command do you think we'd use to remove something yeah we're going to do the same as copy and move we're going to shorten it to rem rem remove something now you didn't see it happen because it wasn't in the folder however something's gone we can prove it now we just have something.txt something has gone marvelous so we can remove files again if i give it a file path it'd remove what was in you know the file in that in that path so we can create a file we can modify a file with the echo append into it or overwriting it um we can copy a file we can move a file we can rename a file with a move command we can change the name of the directory with a move command and uh, with a move command and we can delete something with the remove command well that's great because we've just been dealing with files up till now what can we do with directories directories are slightly different and very slightly di different so let's just back up out of here let's go and create a directory yeah now creating a directory has its own command and it's simply make directory and we'll make directory 3 so let's just come back into documents on our GUI so that we can see what's going on again nothing happens on the command line but we've now got directory 3 and we can list the contents of directory 3 and just to make sure there's nothing hiding in it there we go there's nothing in the folder and it's but it is there and listable so that's great um, but I don't want the directory what am I going to do now well, I can remove the directory oh how do you think I'm going to remove the directory we can't use the remove command because that's for files we'll come back to that put a pin in that one so what we do we use the rm dir. yeah remove directory we've made a directory now we're going to remove a directory oh you do need to be able to type for any of this to work so again keep your eye over here keep watching keep watching keep watching boom it's gone so we've made a directory we've removed a directory is this important yeah you need to know how to create and delete directories um, when you're doing stuff you know normally you've got a GUI and you just right click you know create folder something like that um, but when you don't have the GUI available you need to be doing this and sometimes you need to do a quick dirty directory create a directory drop some files in it away you go and then you can delete the directory afterwards if it's empty the remove directory command will only remove an empty directory directory 2 it's got files in it yeah it's got three files in it so let's go remove it system says no computer says no so it can't delete the directory because it's not empty but I don't want the files what do I do well I can go and remove each file individually and then delete the directory once it's empty but that's a bit of a pain yeah it's a bit of a slow way round and you know Linux is not about slow it's about speed it's about doing things properly so what we'll do 
is we'll revisit the remove command because essentially we need to remove the files and then the directory. So what we can do is tell the remove command we'll give it another argument yeah we'll give it the recursive files yeah so what we're telling it now is remove recursively so remove yourself and everything within yourself directory 2 pop done bear in mind if you wanted those files they're gone say to out of them they're gone but the remove command with the correct flag the correct um, argument can remove recursively directories yeah all the files within them and the directory itself the remove directory command can only remove an empty directory so that's directories we've done files we've done directories what's next no, we've not finished with files because if we now have a look at our files there's two files here one's file1.txt and one's hello file but you'll notice there's a space in the file name and you go yeah and if I double click on it here Double click on it, oh so it is opening. Um, there's nothing in it, but it opens. Yeah. What's the problem, Rich? Just do it. Okay. We'll use the cat command just to um, quickly dump the contents of it on the screen. And it is file space one dot txt. You asked me to do it. Oh. What's going on here? So the cat command says file no such file well there isn't we've got a file with a lowercase f not file with an uppercase f but we're not looking for just file we're looking for file one dot txt but then the next complaint from cat is i can't find a file called one dot txt why are you looking for a file called one dot txt i want file one dot txt because the space is in there, it counts it as two different files we're looking at. So if I wanted to look at two files at the same time, I could look at file, which is the lowercase f, this file here, and I want to look at uh, file.txt. So it's given me the contents of both files. Yeah. Um, and as these say, file, this is a file with no file extension. Linux doesn't need file extensions for us to be able to work with them. Um, and file.txt is just the same, really. I just did a, a copy of the file. <coughs> but it's copied them out. So it thinks the space is separating file names. So how are we going to get around that? Well, the best practice way is not to put spaces in the file or directory names to start with. If you want to use different words, use an underscore. Uh, worst, uh, worst case scenario, use a dash. I always prefer underscores. So if you're going to create a file called file space one the best way and the best practice way is to create it with an underscore that just takes the problem away completely yeah but what if you've gone onto somebody else's machine you've hacked into it naughty people um, you've got a reverse shell yeah you've SSH'd into somebody's machine exciting times and they've got they've 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 got a file on there yeah you're doing a, a capture the flag um, 
and they want to create this file, well, what we can do is surround it by speech marks. Yeah? Now, what it's doing is saying everything in here. Take it as all characters, yeah? Don't 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 take anything else as anything else. It's all one string of characters, yeah, that make up this file name. Um and again, I've used um speech marks, yeah, double quotes around that. When you list the file contents, it puts a single quote. Oops. So if I use single quotes, there's nothing in the file, so it's not going to display it. But the fact that it returns to the uh, command prompt with no errors means it's done what it's asked to do. Display the contents, well, there is none. Um, but single quotes also work. So you could use a double quote or a single quote. There is another way that we can look at spaces, uh, use files with a space in them. And that is a backslash. There's nothing in file1.txt, but the fact that it's not errored means that it's working. So what does a back, back, backslash do? The backslash is what's called an escape character. Yeah. So it's basically telling Linux, look, the next thing you see after me is not what you think it is. It's a string character. Just include it with whatever's previous and whatever's after. Don't think of it as what you think it's going to be because it thinks a space is a separator. So it's telling the system this is not a separator, it's a space character. Yeah. And you can use the um, the backslash escape character to, to escape out quite a few different things that we'll probably come to in much later videos. But that's two ways you can deal with spaces in the file name. However, if you're going to start creating files, use an underscore. Yeah, don't don't be creating files with spaces in. It just causes problems. And you'll find the same on a Windows machine if you're in the, um, in the command line on a Windows machine or PowerShell or something. You need to quote out the whole file name to get it to work. Otherwise, it thinks it's a break and it two separate things. Cool. So there's your telling off for today. No spaces in your file names. So what else can we do? We've created files, created directories, moved them around, copied them, deleted them. Marvellous. But uh, and we've looked at spaces in them. But where are they? Don't know. You've created them, but can you find them? So um, now I've deleted all my directories and files that I actually need for this next bit. Um, um, uh, uh, what I'm going to do is make the So I'm making a couple of directories. I'm going to touch uh, slash the the two slash the three slash file one. The two, the three. Mm -mm. Does he not like that? Oh. My fault. Too many slashes. <clears throat> um, because I've put the first slash in, it thinks it's going from the beginning. Um, that's my bad. So, um, we'll go. So I'm just going to create a couple of 
a couple of files. Okay, so how do we go about finding files? There's a command for that. What is it? Find. Quite simple. Find. So file is our command and then we need to give it some arguments. And again, with anything, anything, any command, you can do dash dash help or man space command um, to look up the, uh, the manual or the help file for that command. So you can find all the weird and wonderful things you can do with it. Um, so we're going to use a command. The next argument is where, where are we looking? And what I'm saying is from here. So the dot just says from here. Um, and then I need to tell it, I want you to look for a name. So we give it the um, argument dash name. So this is, this is the file name that I want you to look for. Um, and we can do something cool. We can use a wild card, yeah? So we put a little asterisk in that says it's a wild card. And, oops, wrong button. And I'm going to leave it there. I'm, I'm not going to give it a file extension or anything because I don't know what the file extension of the file is. Yeah? And it says I found two files with a lowercase f. Remember, capitalization. Yeah? They're both in in this folder, the root of where we are, which is file and file.txt. So it's found these two. It's not found these because these have got a capitalized F. So what if I wanted to do the same but with a capital F? Ooh, now it's found a whole bunch more. It's not found these two files because these have got a lowercase f. But what it has done is found all the others and recursively gone through all the directories from here out. Yeah, it's found everything from here on. So it'll go through all the directories that it can find from where you've started from. Now you can tell it to go from the home folder. I could give it just a, uh, a forward slash instead of a dot and it'd start at the beginning. In fact, I don't even have to, if I don't give it anything, it'll go from the beginning, which might take a little while because it'll go through the entire file structure, which will take a, a while. Um, but it's found all these. Now, I've put the wildcard in, but it's found all these ones that may not be text files. So I could put in the, all I want is, I just want the .txt files. So it finds them all with the .txt. So the find command is quite useful. But I have to do a capital F and I have to do a lowercase f. Well, I could, I could do, oops, star, yeah, to do a wildcard before. Um, and that's fine, fine. But now it's pulled up flagfile.txt. And I just wanted file.txt. Um, I wasn't asked about flagfile. Yeah. So star before aisle, and it might pick up different words depending on what files you've got. So how can I deal with the capitalization? Yeah, the case sensitivity. Well, what I can do, this is instead of name, I can say I name. Put the star back to an F. And now this time, it's going to find uppercase file one, uppercase file one, lowercase file, uppercase, uppercase. So I name tells it not to worry about capitalization yeah we don't want to be case sensitive um, so that's finding a file yeah um, 
There are other name, other ways, but sometimes the commands are not always available on your version of Linux, which is why I'm not really going to go into them. But <clears throat> I mentioned a little bit while ago, um, and this is the last one, by the way. Um, I just want the TXT files. Well, how do you know what's a text file? You know, I've said these are files, are text files or files with text in them. But what type of file is it? Let's have a look at the file. Um, cat file, it's got words in it, yeah? So you could say it's a text file. But there's a command for that. Um, and it's going to get a little bit confusing here because I've called my files file. But if I use the file command and I say, what's this file? It's called file and it's ASCII text. Fantastic. Um, Let's have a look at file1.txt. That's got text in it. Uh, let's have a look at file space one. Oh, it's called file space one, but that one's empty. So that's just a blank file. Good to know, because we could echo to that. You know, we know that's an empty file. We could pop something in there might be useful if we're doing something nefarious. But if we're doing something nefarious, what's stopping me from saying that file called file what's stopping me from calling that file file.jpg because now Linux GUI, which is, you know, it's bright, but not that bright. It goes, ah, oh, you're a JPEG. I know what you are. You're a picture. Yeah? And I'm now going to prove you're a picture by opening up my picture editor, or my picture viewer, sorry, my image viewer. And it goes, oh, I don't know what this is. Not that intelligent. But the command line, you know where I'm going with this. The command line has got a bit more going on for it. So if I use the file command and look at file.jpg, it says ASCII text, but it's a JPG, JPEG. No, it's not. As I said, Linux doesn't really care what the file name is. And again, can you cat an image file? Can you can you dump the the, uh, uh, the the contents of an image file out in a terminal? Yeah, of course I can, because it's not an image file; it's a text file. And you go, well, what's the use of that, Rich? Well, you just cat it, and if it gives you a load of gobbledygook, it's not a text file. Y yeah. However, um. I'm on somebody else's system. Let's pretend I'm on somebody else's system. That says file.jpg. What if somebody's doing a bit of obfuscation? Yeah. What if somebody somebody sent me that file? Yeah. And said, oh, check out my picture. And you go, oh, okay. And you double clicked on it. But that's not a picture. That's malware. You've now just infected your computer. Yeah, chances are your antivirus system might pick it up. But why why go th to the bother? Yeah, if somebody sends you some spurious files, you fire up a VM, chuck them into your VM, and then you open them on your VM. But you don't open them, you just file it. Yeah, check it with file. And then you know what that file is. If you've got a file that said, um, if, if, if we had a file, oops, it's 
property, best practice, underscore. If I just had a file that said important stuff, is that, is, bear in mind I said, Linux doesn't care about ext uh, file extensions. It, it'll just show you the file names. It doesn't care what it is. But is that important stuff? Um, can I can I actually open it on here? Is it an X? Uh, is it a, a, an XLS file? You know, is it an Excel file? Is it a PowerPoint file? Is it a Word doc doc file um, or docx? Is it some weird, weird binary file? Is it a DLL file? Is it what is that? Can I open it with the the um, the command line? You could try and open it with the command line, and if it's some weird and wonderful file, you might break your session. Well, that's kind of jiggity up now, because you might not be able to hack back in, and you've lost it. But if you're able to do file, it will tell you what that file, or it'll make its best assessment, what is that file. And if it's not a text file, then if it's not ASCII text, then you probably wouldn't try and cat it out. Um, or open it in a text editor or something. So the file command can be really powerful, really useful. Yeah. Um, same with the last video. All these file, uh, all these uh, commands are going to be uh, in a blog post. So I'll leave a link down in the description uh, for you to go and visit that, so you don't have to keep chopping and changing around the uh, around the video. Uh, whilst you're down there, you know, give it the hmm, pinkies up. Um, Unless you don't like it, then drop me a comment. Uh, if I got something wrong or something you'd like to add that I've forgotten because, you know, I'm not as intelligent as, as the command line is, um, drop it in the comments. Let everybody know. Yeah. Um, so uh, in the next one, uh, I think we'll uh, we'll have a look at some more ways of reading these files before we move on to things like taking a look at actual text editor programs um so that'll be fun and um and lots to play with um but for today that's about all i've got for you guys um yeah i hope you found that you know useful um there's a lot of stuff that you can do i would encourage you to um if you're not familiar with with the command line and playing with files and whatnot, uh, it can get a bit a bit confusing sometimes. So get your your uh, uh, folder uh, viewer up, your directory file explorer. Can't think of the word. Get your file explorer up. Uh, get your uh, terminal up and play around. To create a load of files. Yeah, you're in a virtual machine. Hopefully, go back look at the videos. Download your hypervisor, install your virtual machine of your choice, um, <clears throat> and start playing. Um, and you know, if you're worried about breaking something or doing something rep rep something you can't come back from, before you do anything, take a snapshot of your VM, play to your heart's content. If you break it, shut it down, power it off, pull the virtual plug out, restore from your previous snapshot. And it's as if nothing's ever happened, yeah? Um, and just crack on with it. Have fun. Play around. See what you can do. Yeah, create all sorts of different files and documents and whatnot. Um, but as I say, that's it. Um, I do appreciate your time and being here and watching me ramble on. Uh, hopefully you've learnt something out of it. Hopefully it was useful. Um, but for now, that is it. I will um, see you again in the next one. Thanks very much for watching.